Dr. Bhagavan Anto runs the Institute of Greatly Endangered and Rare Species in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. He successfully combined two species to produce hybrid offspring called ligers. The laws of nature apply to big cats as well as primates. Genetically, ligers are 50% tiger and 50% lion. Here on my right, we have a Bengal tiger. She's about a year and a half old, and she's got that bold black and orange striping. And then on my left, we have a young lion about the same year and a half old, who you can see has a much more tawny pale coat. And obviously the mix of the two right here, or the shadow striping and his bold markings, show us the liger. He's a liger because his father is a lion, his mother a tiger. That's the baby. Boy. Now meet the adult. If you haven't come across a fully grown liger before, then this is the largest cat you're ever likely to see. Samson, hop, hop, down, down. It's theorized that ligers are this enormous size because the inhibitor growth gene exists in the female lion and in the male tiger. So when you switch around and you get a male lion breeding with a female tiger, creating the liger, you get this gigantic size. Nothing tells it when to stop. In the wild, this enormous size wouldn't necessarily be of any advantage because it would require so much more food. Samson here can readily eat 25 pounds of food in a sitting, where an adult lion can subside on 7 to 10 pounds of food. The territories of a lion and tiger don't overlap in the wild. If a tiger did meet up with a pride of lions, it's more likely to end up in a fight than romance. So captive breeding is the only way to produce what is the largest cat in the world. Sam, come here. There it is. Up, 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 up. There it is. Up. Height, height. Get close to him. Ligers show traits common to both parents. Get close to him. For instance, tigers love to get wet, but lions can't stand the water. Samson got his water-loving genes from the tiger side of the family. The liger is living proof that two species who would never meet up in the wild can mate and produce offspring. It works for cats, but how alike are primates? To find out the answer, scientists measured how well bonded human DNA is when compared to a mix of human and chimp DNA. If you take one strand of human DNA and heat it, the double helix splits into two separate single strands. When heated, chimp DNA will unravel in the same way. When cooled, a human strand will always seek to pair up with another human strand, the chemical links matching up like the rungs in a ladder, forming a strong bond. Swamping human DNA with chimp DNA will eventually see both strands pairing up, although the chemical bonds are not so strong. Measuring this difference in strength between human DNA and hybrid DNA reveals how genetically different humans are to other species. When looking at such differences in DNA, it's clear the closest relative to humans is the chimpanzee. We share at least 99% of our basic biochemistry uh, in common with each other, and I would be surprised, therefore, if humans and chimpanzees couldn't hybridize. The real question, however, is if humans and chimpanzees did hybridize, would those hybrids be reproductively viable? Hybrid animals, such as the liger, are usually sterile because sterility is nature's way of preventing different species from crossbreeding. 